Advanced Piano Roll Part 1. In this next series of movies, we are going to be discussing some of the more advanced features of the piano roll. Let's begin by discussing slides. In order to draw a slide, select the Slide Toggle button. Every note drawn afterwards until the toggle is turned off will be a slide. Slides are not notes and if used by themselves create no sound. A slide needs to be drawn above or below other notes. The slide shifts the pitch of the notes in its direction. If a slide is drawn above, then it shifts upwards. If a slide is drawn below, then they shift down. This only works with native FL Studio instruments and not third-party instruments. Slide notes also store other parameters such as pan and velocity, and so the notes that slide also slide towards those settings as well. So let's look here for just one moment at the, what we have on the actual piano roll. Delete that that I just drew, and we'll see now we have a series of green notes, three blue, and then two pink. Let's clear out the blue for a moment just to simplify things. And now you see three green and one pink with a slide in each color. Now this slide here is going to draw all of these notes upwards in pitch. And this one here, this slide, is going to draw this one down in pitch. Now the way to adjust what's going on with the other parameters is to open the properties for the slide. And you'll see we have settings here. So a pan of a right, select, and say that this has a pan of a left select. Now when this is played, the panning will actually shift from left to right over the course of this slide. Next, let's discuss color groups. You can already see we have colors in action, and let's redraw those blues. Now we have three different color groups working. Notes can be assigned these colors, which break them into specific groups. Now these apply to slides, MIDI channels, and editing. In this case you can see the slide is green. It will only affect these three green notes. And this slide will only affect this. And none of the slides will affect these blue notes even if they go the whole length of each of the slides. Now, in terms of editing, this can be very useful if you click on one of the green notes and go to the menu under Edit. You can say Select by Color this is going to highlight each of those green notes. Now this is useful if you double click you can adjust the pan, velocity, and each of these other parameters all at once for all the notes at one time. Make your changes, select the check to enact them. These also affect MIDI channel information which is a more advanced thing when dealing with actually sending this to MIDI equipment outside of your computer so we'll cover this in a later section. Okay. The last thing we want to cover is the event editor. The event editor is a very easy way to adjust different performance data such as volume, pitch, panning, and automation data. To view the different parameters, select one from the target control menu, which is at the top of the screen here. You can see we have note panning, note velocity, note release, note filter cutoff frequency, note filter resonance, and note fine pitch. These parameters should be becoming more and more familiar because we've seen them in a number of different places, including when you double click on a note, they show up here. Those two things are actually connected. If you change one, it affects the other. You can also get to the actual event note list by clicking on the left side down here of the actual event window. Let's deal with velocity. If we go through here, the actual data here can only be changed for the notes that are selected. But you see, I cannot click on any note that is not highlighted up in the piano roll itself. This is why selecting the notes by color is very useful. Especially in the case like this where the two notes vertically are lined up. How do you edit the data for just one of them? Well, you can select one of them here and it will change it. Control click on this other one and change that one. So that's one way by selecting it up here but it does make it easy when working with notes of a single color to go to the edit, select by color, and now we can adjust all of the green notes without highlighting and de-highlighting notes up in the actual piano roll. 
Now this has been just kind of an overview of these specific advanced features and we're going to go on with some other advanced features in the next movie. Advanced Piano Roll Part 2. In this movie, we're going to look at three different advanced tools in the piano roll. Let's start with Articulate. This tool is a way to change note lengths. Remember that this tool applies to single selected notes or selected groups of notes. Multiply sets the percentage of the length to be changed. This ranges from 10% to 100%. The Use Length determines whether or not you're going to use the original note length for this multiplication or if you're going to use a legato preset. Variation allows for a bit of randomization in the process. You also have under the options menu three presets, legato, portato, and staccato. That's it for the articulator, pretty basic. Next let's look at the quantizer. MIDI quantization is a powerful tool. This allows you to move notes around to fit into a grid or groove template. The grid is the same grid used by the piano roll, but groove templates are user-created alternate grids that don't necessarily line up with the standard grid. In this case, we can load a groove template. Here we have several. We also have subfolders as well. Let's choose one of the snap presets for this example. Now, if you are drawing your notes manually, then using quantization might not be needed or desirable. Only use this function when you want to tighten up a performance or pull some notes into line with a specific groove template. The key to creating a natural sounding quantization result is in setting the proper strength settings. The start time wheel allows you to set the start time in between the full quantized and originally recorded start time. This results in a closer to the grid feel without 100% perfection. If you want the sequence to sound robotic, then 100% might be perfect. Using a less than perfect strength keeps some of the humanness intact. Here you can see as I move the start time down to 0% that it keeps the original start time and as I move it up to 100% that the note moves right in line with the grid. Now the sensitivity wheel indicates how close to a grid point the note must be for it to be quantized. So as we move this, when we get to a certain point you'll see that the grid snaps off. It means now the sensitivity is outside the range of that note. Turn the sensitivity until it snaps on. Good. This is useful when a note is far off a point on purpose. Then you can set it so it won't be changed. Now the duration wheel is the same as the start time wheel except with durations. Full left equals original duration and full right equals the quantized duration. You can see when I pull this all the way down it goes to the original note duration and when I pull it all the way up it snaps to the grid. The duration drop down menu provides several modes for quantizing duration. These are pretty straightforward. Leave duration, leave end time, quantize duration, quantize end time. The level knobs mix between the original and the same parameters in the groove template. That's it for the quantizer. Next let's move on to the chopper. The chopper takes a groove template and chops up the selection accordingly. Let's load a pattern. You can see we have all kinds here, six notes, one, trance, offbeat, slides, etc. Let's choose stutter. You can see that it's chopping the notes up in a pattern. The time multiplicator knob, when set in default, leaves the groove tempo alone. When adjusted, it speeds up or slows down the tempo of the groove. 